charge set. Now hold the line. What is up guys, Rick Kakis here, back from the Destiny 2 World Gameplay Premiere. Still a little bit jet lagged, but really want to make today's video to answer a ton of questions that I'm sure you guys have. Because today's video is going to be on, frankly, what I thought was the biggest change and the most surprising change from Destiny 1 into Destiny 2, which is the entirely new gun system. That's right, the gun system as we know is getting essentially a complete overhaul in Destiny 2 and this has huge ramifications. So we're going to talk about what was officially announced, how everything works, including conversations I had with Bungie developers. So hopefully you will get a better insight in this video than frankly anywhere else. So let's get started, but just before we do guys, if you do enjoy this content, find it informative, please remember to support the video by liking and especially sharing. It's a simple thing to do, but it really does help me out. And so, on to the video. Now, I'm sure a lot of you guys have seen Destiny 2 gameplay being posted, and you'll notice someone using, you know, a pulse rifle, and then they switch to a hand cannon, and then they switch to a snipe rifle? Wait, what is going on here? Those collection of weapons do not work. Well, that's what's going on. It's the entirely new gun system. In Destiny right now, we have primary weapons, and then we have special weapons, and then lastly we have heavy weapons. All three of these slots are different essentially in Destiny 2, because now we're going to have, firstly, kinetic weapons, then we're going to have energy weapons, and lastly we're going to have power weapons. These are still color-coded in the traditional white, green, and purple. So, what weapons fall into each category, and how do these categories differ from one another? Well, importantly, during the gameplay premiere, we only got to experience a small amount of the loot table. Uh, there were several different activities for us to play. There was campaign, we got to play the first campaign mission, then you got to play a strike, and then there was PvP. And you got to play on the PlayStation 4, and there was the exact same setup all on the PC. And don't worry, we're going to be talking about PS4 versus PC and all that stuff in a different video, but no matter what you were doing, the weapons were all the same same, except for a different exotic weapon depending on what class you were playing as. So again, we didn't get to see a huge amount of the loot table, but we still got to see generally how things are broken down into these different categories. So for the kinetic weapons, these are pretty similar to what you have with the primary weapons in Destiny. You have auto rifles, pulse rifles, scout rifles, hand cannons all making an appearance in this kinetic weapon category. But then energy weapons are where things got interesting because in the energy weapon slot we had sidearms, we had the all new submachine guns, and then we had hand cannons? Now that is where things get interesting. So hand cannons can be a kinetic weapon, we got to use a kinetic hand cannon, or they can actually do elemental damage and be classified as an energy weapon. And so you can literally in Destiny 2 have a primary essentially hand cannon and a secondary hand cannon. When your IS Luna isn't enough and you need to have a backup palindrome, you can do that in Destiny 2, in a sense. Now, the question obviously remains, what about the other normal, what we think of as primary weapons? Can you get auto rifles that are elemental damage and therefore fit into the energy weapon category. The same question for scout rifles and pulse rifles. And furthermore, can you get kinetic versions of sidearms and submachine guns? Well, the general consensus when talking to the developers was we can't exactly tell you just yet. However, in a conversation with 
Josh Hamrick, which is a big Bungie developer, I asked him this question. I said, can we get, you know, kinetic SMGs? Can we get elemental auto rifles and all of that stuff? And they fit into the other category. And he said, well, again, I can't really tell you just yet. However, what I can say is that during our development process, we referred to these categories as freedom slots. He said that these two categories with kinetic and energy weapon slots were referred to as freedom slots. Now what that says to me is that you will find kinetic SMGs. You will find kinetic sidearms, and you also will find the elemental versions of all of the normal primers, and you have the freedom to equip what you want. If you really want to run pulse rifle plus auto rifle, you will have the freedom to do that, and that is really interesting, and hopefully that will give you guys a huge insight into what is coming into Destiny 2 with this gun system, is that the first two slots are pretty interchangeable, and the only thing making a weapon an energy weapon is its elemental burn. Now the question then remains, can you get the same weapon elemental? Or is there different weapons for these two categories? Uh, essentially, can you get a normal kinetic IS Luna, which goes into your kinetic category, and then can you just get an elemental version of the IS Luna? And then that goes into your secondary category. And by the way, guys, the IS Luna, I don't think is making a return in Destiny 2. I'm just using it as an example. Um, and that question, I don't know yet. I don't know if there's just going to be different versions, normal kinetic versions and elemental versions of every gun, or if certain guns are only elemental and then other guns are only kinetic. That's a very interesting question, but again, unfortunately, we don't know the answer just yet. Now, something else that was very interesting, and again, this came from a conversation with a bunch of developer, was that there is a little bit more than just having a kinetic weapon for the sake of having a kinetic weapon and then having an elemental burn weapon to help you take down shields. Of course, those elemental burn weapons are going to be most useful for taking down enemy shields, but this developer said to me that you also have a reason to use your kinetic weapon and swap to your kinetic weapon when dealing with enemies because kinetic weapons do more damage against normal non-shielded enemies. That was very interesting. So if you're shooting just a normal red health enemy with a kinetic hand cannon, it's going to do more damage than if you stay with, let's say, your elemental hand cannon that you use to take down the enemy's shield. Now, I really hope that that feature makes its way into the final release of the game because right now, there really is no reason to switch off of an elemental primary. Mainly because if you're using an arc weapon and you're damaging a solar shield, it doesn't do any less damage than if you're using a normal kinetic weapon and damaging that same solar shield. So the only thing you get is upside. When you encounter an arc shield, you take it down way faster. In every other occasion, it's acting like a normal kinetic weapon. In my opinion, you should get, you know, less damage than normal if you're damaging a wrong elemental shield, and then that's going to make kinetic weapons more consistent. But in Destiny 2, again, doing bonus damage against non-shielded enemies, that's another incentive for using your kinetic weapon and just like this developer said to me, switching between these weapons all the time during an engagement. All right, now lastly, we need to talk about the power weapon category because this is definitely a huge change where snipe rifles, fusion rifles, and shotguns, and rocket launchers, and the new grenade launchers are all fitting into this category, are all power weapons. And the main question that I'm sure a lot of you guys are thinking right now is balance. How will that work? And I outright asked a Bungie developer this question. I said, how are you guys going to balance this? Because generally, rocket launchers are more powerful than your average fusion rifle. Like I know in Destiny right now, if I had to pick between the two, I would probably pick up the Galahorn over a fusion rifle. I think it would be a little bit better in a lot of scenarios. Well, the developer outright said to me, ammo. We are balancing it based on ammo. If you pick up ammo, if you pick up this power ammo, uh, and in PvP, in some of the PvP gameplay you're going to see in the background, uh, I do get some of this power ammo, and if you have a rocket launcher, you get one round. You get one round for the rocket launcher we had in the Destiny 2 uh, gameplay test environment. But, for a sniper rifle, you got around five rounds. 
For a fusion rifle, it was kind of the same. And for a shotgun, I think it was also kind of the same all around, you know, four to six rounds for those different weapons. So, that is definitely a balancing factor. You're going to get one kill, one guaranteed kill pretty much, with a rocket launcher, for sure. Maybe even a double kill, maybe if you get incredibly lucky, a triple kill. But, with a sniper rifle, if you get five rounds, you know, if you're a talented sniper, that means four to five kills, you know, kind of easily. So that is definitely, you know, that makes sense. We're gonna have to see how the game pans out. We're gonna have to see what kind of rocket launchers with what kind of perks, and especially with what kind of armor that potentially affects these rocket launchers, if that'll make a difference. Because if you're picking up like three rounds for a rocket launcher with this power ammo, suddenly, suddenly, the gap closes quite significantly and then you do have weapons that are you know i would say three rounds for a rocket launcher is much better than five rounds for a fusion rifle and especially because um from what we saw in pvp the ammo economy was relatively the same as it is right now in destiny where you do not start with power weapon ammo in fact that's actually worse than it is right now you start with no sniper rounds in your inventory so that is definitely a, a big thing you have to pick it up during the actual gameplay rounds and if you have leftover power ammo and you die you respawn with none so it's a pretty stingent ammo economy in Destiny 2 when we're talking about the power weapons. In PvE, the ammo concerns also come up during uh, the campaign mission and during the strike. If you're trying to run a sniper rifle, which, you know, right now in Destiny, you pretty much constantly have, if you want to run a sniper, sniper ammo to use against a boss. Whereas, you know, during the strike we got to play for Destiny 2, when I was running a sniper, yeah, it was great when I had ammo, but I did not have ammo very much. Again, your sniper is basically a heavy weapon, and heavy ammo is still not dropping in abundance. So, you're going to have to rely on your primary a lot more to take down these enemies, to take down these bosses, and that is definitely a big deal. However, due to these ammo restrictions, it also does give Bungie the opportunity to make these weapons, to make sniper rifles, to make fusion rifles a lot more powerful, especially in PvE. You can have weapons doing a lot of damage per round and having, you know, ridiculously high magazine sizes as they would be seen right now. Like a weapon doing black spindle damage with six rounds in a magazine, which seems absurd. And it would be in Destiny 1, but in Destiny 2, because you are basically getting these weapons via getting heavy ammo, which doesn't drop very much, that suddenly doesn't seem absurd. Like we already have stuff like the Sleeper Simulant, which is basically a sniper doing an absurd amount of damage per shot, and it's balanced because it is in that heavy ammo category. So you could start seeing a lot more of things like that, very powerful power weapons in Destiny 2, and that is a little bit exciting actually, especially when we're talking about PvE. And so guys, that is how the new Destiny 2 gun system works. Again, I hope you guys enjoyed this video, found it informative, and if you did, please remember to help support it. Now, if you guys want to see more Destiny and Destiny 2 content, be sure to slap that subscribe button. And if you actually want it to do anything, you're going to have to press the bell beside subscribe to actually be notified of new uploads. Now, if you guys want to get in touch with me and keep up to date with the latest channel activity, the best way is to follow me on Twitter at RickCacus. That's linked in the description down below, as is my Twitch channel, which you can also follow. Again, I hope you enjoyed this video, and as always, have a good day.